Hey, what's up guys? This is Dark Arm Duels, and today I'm going to be doing a deck profile of my Shadow Trains. And I'm really excited to do this deck profile because it's a little bit of a rogue deck. And yes, guys, I like trains. So let's go get into this deck profile and see what I'm playing in here. So let me move these guys over here because we want to keep Winda kind of in the picture because she's beautiful. Um, so first off, we're playing three copies of Night Express Knight because Night Express Knight cannot be special summoned, which really isn't that big of a deal. But the nice thing about Night Express Knight is, is that you can normal summon it, and it's a rank, or it's not a rank, it's a level 10 monster, that when it's normal summoned, it becomes zero attack, which really isn't that big a deal, because usually you're just going to use it for um, XYZ fodder to make your rank 10s. Um, then we play three copies of Heavy Freight Train. Uh, I know, the Freight Train. just it, It's just going to hit you like a Freight Train in this deck. So with the three Heavy Freight Trains, you can, whenever you normal summon a Night Express Knight, you can special summon this card right behind it. Um, basically, when a level 10 um, machine monster is normal summoned, you can special summon this behind it. And the really nice thing about it is, is when it's detached, once per turn, uh, if this card is detached from an XYZ monster and sent to the graveyard, you can target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. So it's kind of a spot removal as well, which is really, really nice. Um, just an overall really, really good card. Uh, it helps with your rank 10 plays, because if you normal summon this and then special summon this right behind it, you instantly get a Super Dora, which is really, really good. Um, then we play three copies of Ruffian Railcar. Um, it's a little bit interesting of a card. I know it's only a rank or a level 4. I always want to say rank now. But only a level 4, but it comes in very handy with Revolving Switch Shard. Um, its effect is that... Once per turn, you can inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent, which can kind of gaga ga cowboy your opponent. Um, but you can only use um, the second effect once per turn. Um, its effect is is that, uh, let's see, if this card is in your graveyard because it was sent there this turn, you can add one level 10 Earth Machine Monster from your deck to your hand, which is really nice because it searches out these guys, which is really nice because you only play six of them. But also with Revolving Switch Shard is a search card too. So this is a really nice search card. Uh, then for the final rank or level 10s, I always want to say 10s, we play two copies of Exodios, the Ultimate Forbidden Lord. And the reason we play this is because sometimes you'll run out of monsters in this deck because it just plays so quickly. Um, so with Exodios, it kind of spins all of them back to the deck and then special summons you a level 10 monster, which is really, really nice because if you say... Normal summon this, special summon this, have revolving switch yard on field, special summon this off revolving switch yard, and then special summon this from your hand, you get two rank 10s off of having all four of them on the field, which is super, super good, because you can make uh, two Super Doras or a Gustav Max, which is really nice. Um, but that's it for the rank 10 engine. Let's get into the um, Shadow engine. It hasn't changed all that much since the last time I showed you guys, but uh, that was Prediction Princess when I showed you last time, so it's a little bit different. Uh, so first off, we're playing two copies of Shadow Beast. Uh, when it's flipped face up, you can draw two cards and then discard a card, and if it's sent from the, I believe it's the hand, I think it's with all the Shadows, that if it's sent to the graveyard, it gets its second effect. Yeah, if this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can draw one card. So it's pretty nice, and you can only activate all the Shadow effects once per turn. Uh, then we play two copies of Shadow Dragon. With Shadow Dragon, it's kind of a compulse when it's flip face up, and then if it's sent to the graveyard, you can destroy Spell or Trap, which is super nice. Uh, Squamata, its effect is, is that if it's flip face up, then you can um, destroy one monster on the field, which is really, really powerful at times, because you set this and it like man-eater bugs something which is really nice. Also, if it's sent to the graveyard of Foolish Barrels, a Shed All monster, which usually you'll send your beast to draw an extra card. Then we play two copies of Shed All Hedgehog, which I used to play three, but now I'm only playing two because this is more of a really big monster deck, less control, and less need for the Shed All fusion. Um, with it, when it's flip face up, you can add one Shed All monster from your deck to your hand. Um, or excuse me, not when it's... Sent to, when it, if this card is flipped face up, you can add one Shadow Spell or Trap to your hand. If it's sent to the graveyard, you can add one Shadow Monster. 
excuse me, I almost messed that up. And then finally, for the last two Shadal monsters, we play two copies of Shadal Falco, which is our only tuner in this deck now. Uh, with Shadal Falco, when it's flip face up, you can special summon a Shadal monster from your graveyard and face down defense, and it's a floater if it's sent to the grave. So if it's sent to the graveyard, you can... Um, Special summon it in face down defense position, but remember with all these shed alls you can only activate either or effect like if I Special summon this off of being floating and I flip it face up later in the turn It won't work because it won't special summon anything It only is either or with the shed all engine, but it's really a good engine and that's actually it for the monsters Let's get into the spells guys so for the spell cards, we're playing one copy of El Shadow Fusion, which is by far one of the best Shadows Fusion, or actually the best Shadow Fusion in my opinion, um, because it's a quick play. Uh, the other one lets you special summon from your deck, but this one actually is the one that got hit out of the two. So uh, this is basically just a quick play um, fusion card, which is super nice. That lets you special summon a Shadow Fusion monster. Then we play three copies of Shadow Fusion. With Shadow Fusion, you if your opponent controls a monster that is special summoned from the extra deck, then you can fusion summon from your deck, which is amazing because it lets you send any of your Shadow monsters from the deck and get their effects off, and then you can send off maybe a Ruffian Rail Car or something like that, and then you get I believe you get to search off of it. Let me see. Um, yes, if this card is sent to the graveyard because it was sent there this turn, yes, you can actually use it as a, um, as a search later. Then we play one copy of Foolish Burial because this allows your Shadows to get any of their effects off at any time, which is amazing. Then we play three copies of Revolving Switch Shard, which is kind of the core of the deck. And Revolving Switch Shard actually has two effects. Um... If a level 10 earth machine type monster is normal or special summoned to your side of the field, except during the damage step, you can activate this effect. Your opponent takes no battle damage for the rest of the turn, which kind of sucks, but makes the card balanced. Um, also, you can special summon one level 4 earth type machine monster with 1800 attack or more from your deck. And if you do, its level becomes 10, which is why you play Ruffian Rail Car at 3 is because you can special summon Ruffian Rail Car off when you normal summon out your Night Express Knights to get another rank 10 machine to overlay into Superdora or Ravenous Tarantula or something like that. Um, and then its effect is also it's also a search card because you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard add one level 10 earth machine type monster from your deck to your hand, but you can only use one effect of revolving switch yard per turn. So you can't search one normal summon it and then add and then special summon the roughing rail car. You have to do either or, but then because we really, really want to get to this really fast, we're playing three copies of terraforming because you really want to get to your revolving switch yard as fast as possible. And let's say you, let's just say that you draw uh, two of these and two of the, or maybe two of these and one of these. You can use this and discard it off of the effect to get an extra machine from your deck, which thins the deck out, which is not is why I play three, because it's always useful to have fodder to discard. And that's actually it for the spells. So for the traps, we play one copy of Solemn Warning. I decided to play Solemn Warning in this deck over Solemn Strike, I don't know why, I just kind of did. Um, but if you want to play Solemn Strike, pop this out, put Solemn Strike in if you want to. Um, skill Drain, because Skill Drain makes it when you normal summon out your um, Night Express Knight, it comes out at 3,000. And then if you special summon out the uh, Heavy Freight Train, it doesn't half its own attack points when it gets special summoned out, which is ridiculous. Um, actually amazing. And this actually hurts your opponent a hell of a lot more than it hurts you. Then we play one copy of Vanity's Emptiness, because once we get that board established, we don't really need to special summon much more. Um, if we special summon out a Super Dora and maybe, I don't know, uh, Shikinaga, we don't really need anything else. We can just win off of that. Uh, one Shed All Core, because it's still pretty, pretty good in the deck. Um, it makes a level 9 quick monster, and it counts as a Shed All, so I kind of play it as an emergency flip if I don't have a monster, which usually doesn't happen. But the really nice thing is if it's sent to the graveyard, you can add 
a um, target one shed all spell or trap card in your graveyard except shed all core and add it to your hand um, which is really really nice if it's sent to the graveyard by a card effect and then finally we play three copies of call of the haunted because besides your night express knights the rest of them can be special summoned from the graveyard and i think exodios can't be special summoned um yeah i don't think exodios can be special summoned except by his own effect so you kind of just play this to bring back your shed to use them for more fusion fodder and you can bring back your heavy freight trains which is really nice because then you can just normal summon something else and go off and do a big play but that's it for the main deck let's get into the extra deck guys so for the extra deck, we're going to play, as always, two copies of Shadow Winda. Winda is a really nice card. It makes it so you can only special summon. Both players can only special summon once per turn. And if it's sent to the graveyard, then you can add a uh, Shadow Spell or Trap card from your graveyard to your hand, which is super nice. Then I'm playing three copies of Shikinaga because I'm playing, like, I think it's nine targets uh, with all the train support in here. Um, and Shikinaga's effect is this. Um... When it's on the field, you can, um, while you have a Shed All monster in your hand, you can negate the activation of a monster effect and destroy that monster by sending one uh, Shed All monster from your hand to the graveyard. And if it's sent to the graveyard, you have can add the one Shed All spell or trap to your hand if it's sent to the grave. Um, then we play the Spider Engine, which I love the Spider Engine, especially in ranked 10 decks. And that is one copy, well, I'm actually playing two copies of Ravenous Tarantula. Um, and I'll go through these individually after I lay them down. Uh, one copy of Pain Gainer and one Seven Cents. Now, I really like Ravenous Tarantula. It is ridiculous, its effect. I have made a Super Dora over 8,000 attack with this thing. Um, all monsters you currently control gain attack equal to the difference between your life points and your opponent's life points. So if there's a big gap, you can make them gain as much as 7,900 if, if you or your opponent have 8,000 and they only have 100 which is ridiculous. And then every time your opponent special summons a monster, inflict eight, 600 points of damage to your opponent, and you can target one monster on the field, detach a card from this card, or excuse me, not target a monster. You can detach one XYZ from this card, destroy all face of monsters your opponent controls that with less attack than this card's attack, which is ridiculous. And it's a rank 10, so it's easy to go into this deck. So if you don't have a big gap in between your opponent and your life points, you just make Pain Gainer on top of it. Pain Gainer's effect really doesn't matter all that much, but I'll tell you really quick. Um, Pain Gainer's effect is, is that it can be XYZ summoned on top of a 10, an 8, 9, or 10 dark XYZ monster with two or more XYZ materials. Uh, and it gains defense equal to the total rank you of... Um, all X, Y, Z monsters you control. So it comes out times 200. So it comes out with 24, I believe, or 22, 24, something like that. I think it's 22. Um, and each time your opponent activates a spell or trap card, they take 600 points of damage. Uh, once per turn, you can detach one X, Y, Z from this card, destroy all phase of monster your opponent controls with defense less than this card's defense, which is okay. But you usually just climb after this and you just make seven cents, which is just a 4,000 meter that once per turn, I believe it is. Yeah, once per turn, you can detach two XYZs in this card, banish as many special summon monster your opponent controls as possible, then attach one of those banished XYZ monsters you control to this card. Uh, if this face of card would be destroyed by battle or by card effect, I don't see anything killing this by battle except Utopia the Lightning, you can detach one XYZ from this card instead, which really protects itself, which is a humongous beater anyways. Um, then we play one Sky Palace, I know I spent a lot of time on that, but these are really, really good cards. Um, then we play one copy of Sky Palace. Uh, really quick for Sky Palace, um, once per turn you can detach one XYZ from this card, target one card your opponent controls, destroy that target, and if you do inflict 1,000 points of damage to your opponent. It's okay, it's quick pop, that's about it. Um, then we play two copies of Super Dora. Uh, Super Dora's effect is, is that you can detach a card from it, target one monster on the field, um, and that target is unaffected by all other card effects except its own, which is nice. Uh, one copy of Rail Cannon, which detach card inflict 2,000 points of damage to your opponent. One Castell for when we need to spin stuff. And the one Goyo Guardian, just in case we normal summon that Falco. But that's it, guys. Uh, that's it for the entire Shed All deck. I haven't done Shed Alls in like a while because I've been playing around with them trying to figure out how I wanted to play them. But I think I really like Trains. Um, it makes humongous beaters, which is what I love to make in-game. But 
that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, join Dark Armed Alliance down below. And this is Dark Armed Duelist, and I'm out. See you later, guys.